Hey folks, Levi here once again. Welcome back to another review. Hope you enjoyed my review of the Phantom today from starring Billy Zane. If that's on my channel if you want to check it out. Oh, also again, for those of you new to my channel, welcome. If anyone's ever new, uh, my name is Levi McNally. This is my real name real life too. I just like to use my own name on my channel, but that's just me. But anyway, for those that don't know, I have been doing a superhero marathon on my YouTube channel. Hopefully, the lights better. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't have the best room with the best quality, but hopefully one day it'll get better and better audio too. I know. I know my audio so You don't have to tell me in the comments down below. Already know that. <laughs> I know that, folks. But what I've been doing is a superhero marathon on my YouTube channel, and I'm in all the '90s era of superhero movies, films like superhero movies that came out in the 1990s from to 19, 1990 to 1999. And I got one more film of 1996. This is a sequel, the second installment in this, well, as you can say, franchise. Though the first movie was with Brandon Lee, that is The Crow, City of Angels. Starring Vincent Price. This is the second installment. It is directed by Tom, Tim Pope, and it's a screenplay written by David S. Goyer. It's the second installment. I guess I got a franchise because The Crow of Brandon Lee was, you know, it was, sorry. May rest in peace, finally. It didn't make good enough money at the box office, though. I don't know if it's $23 million, made $94 million worldwide, so it was successful. So, of course, it got a franchise. I think this might have been directed video. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. But, yeah, and I do have those two sequels here, but we're just talking about The Crow City of Angels with Vincent Price right now. This, The Crow City of Angels, I thought it was okay. This film was just, meh. It was an art sequel. For what it was, I thought it was okay. I didn't think of it as a masterpiece. I'm not going to sit here and say this is a terrible sequel. This is a rant. It didn't piss me off. I didn't hate this movie. I just thought The Crow City of Angels was alright. It's an okay movie. But my favorite Crow sequel is... God damn it, I just dropped a fucking DVD case. <laughs> On accident. My favorite Crow sequel is The Soul Crow Salvation. I like this one the most. I know some people don't, but I prefer this one over better this one and I definitely can say I definitely prefer these two even City of Angels way over with your prayer yeah I'm glad but they were probably yeah that one was that no yeah well I think this sequel is decent it's alright it's nowhere as near as awful as with your prayer and Salvation is better in my opinion my favorite of these because I like Salvation the most because of it's different it is something different and cops are the ones I'll get more into that when I review the Crow Salvation one day but again, both of these movies, one day, 2000s era of superhero reviews. But first of all, we're going to talk about Crow City of Angels. Like I said, I think it's an okay sequel, so let's get into it. Of course, you can assume since the Crow was successful that they wanted to do sequels. Of course, that happens with any movie. But after the success of the first film, producer Edward R. Pressman and Miramax saw the franchise potential of the film with the David S. Ward test writing a sequel featuring a new protagonist. During editing, and of course, you know, David Square, they did not intend to make Eric Draven. At least I'll give them that. They do respect Brandon Lee. They were not going to, you know, add Eric Draven character, the Eric Draven character, and it was a new character. The character in here that they changed, his name is Ash Croven. His name is Ash, played by Vincent Price. And it's a new story. Well, it kind of rips off the first movie a little bit. Some of it is new, kind of. But anyway, during editing, producer Bob and Harvey Winston took the film away from Tim Pope with the intention of making it more like the first one. According to Pope, the Winston has directed the editor to structure the film like his personage to the point scenes were reversed as flashbacks, despite not originally intended to be. After Pope returned to the UK, he was contacted by Winston's, Winston, who had at Winston's, who constructed a director's cut with which he was not involved in. Pope refused to see it or contract to any commentary on the home media release. Pope's experience making the Crow State of Angels was unpleasant and that Pope avoided returning to future films for over two decades. Wow, I didn't know that. The music score... I do like a bit of the soundtrack. I mean, it does have some good songs in here. I mean, Boogeyman, that, that was an awesome song. It's got some good songs. And the music, again, is once again by Graham Reveal, who did the music for the first movie. So there are some cues in here, some music score cues you hear that are similar to the first movie. Yeah. And for the cast, you have Vincent Price as Ash Rogan, the crow. He 
was all right. I didn't think he was believable in the league. That's just me. I didn't really care too much about his character. I get what he's going for, but I didn't really care for him as a lead. That's just me. I'm sorry. You just can't be, you know. Mia Khrushchev as Sarah Meyer, Sarah from the first movie. Uh, she did a movie like Human Remains, Mad City, not another teen movie. Richard Brooks as Judah. Um, the only superhero thing I've seen, seen him do is he uh, was he played a character called Wolf from The Flash season four. Oh, he was in. He was in Team with the 1985 movie. I guess playing one part. I don't remember him in that. He's probably a lot younger. He was in a, a horror movie, I think, called Shocker. Yeah. Well, he said he was... His character in Season 4 was Gregory Wolf and Season 4 of The Flash. CW is The Flash. Dai Trang Tang as Kala. Oh, she plays. Yeah, she was from the late, the late Dai Tang. She was the Yellow Ranger from Power Rangers. Well, I didn't know she was in this movie, but yeah, her character Kyla is a villain. Iggy, Iggy Pope as Curve, one of the villains of the movie. His acting is not the best. He's not really an actor. He's more of a musician. Thomas Jane as Nemo. Now, Thomas Jane, he was in the movies that I like, like Deep Blue Sea, The Mist. He's an underrated actor. Now, he did play a superhero. He did, well, an anti-hero for Marvel, and that was the... No, 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 no. He was in The Punisher, the 2004 movie with John Travolta. Love that movie. Awesome movie. So, it's awesome that he, uh, you know, did the superhero movie. I was surprised to see him when I first saw like, That's Thomas Jane, the Punisher in this movie? Yeah. You know. Vincent Colon as, as Spider Monkey. Oh, he was Mateo from Anaconda. <laughs> uh, the 1997 film starring John Voight and uh, Ice Cube and Jennifer Lopez. He's like the first person to... Find out he's like the first person to get killed in this movie, spoiler alert. He was also the first person to die in Anaconda. Eric Coaster as Danny Driven, Corbin, the kid. Uh, Ash's son. Beverly Mitchell as Grace. She was in a movie called The Facility. I haven't seen her or anything. I am Dory as Noah. Another singing songwriter. Tr Tracy Ellis as Zibulu. Ellen Kalift as Bassett. Bassett. Terry Russ. Russ. Can't say his name right. As Zeke. And the Philippines as themselves. I guess a band group in this movie. The film got a 14%. The Crusade Ranger is a slightly pretend that captures neither the mood nor the of the film, which I could agree with. I wouldn't say it's something else. No, I'm like uh, critic Joe Leiden. No. You want to say this is stunningly, this is awful, you're saying? Dude, you need to watch The Crow with the prayer then if, you, if you're going to say, say a movie's awful. You really don't know what you're talking about. Mm. Uh, and it's directed by Tim Pope. I don't know if he made a movie, but any other movies? Or directed music videos. His directing is okay. I can see why he had a pleasant time. It just seemed like the producers or whatever were taking it from him. David S. Gloria, he's worked on superhero movies before. Uh, he wrote uh, the 1998 television superhero film Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. that serves David Hasselhoff. And he wrote the Blade Trilogy. I think he... Yeah, he directed Blade Trinity. He directed Blade Trinity, which... <laughs> he sucks as a director. I'm sorry. I don't like Blade, I don't like Blade Trinity. Anyway, future review really talking there. And of course, the Dark Knight Trilogy, which again, I think is an overrated trilogy, but that's just me. I love Man of Steel, though. He also wrote a script for Batman vs. Superman, which... Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I've never seen The Invisible or The Unborn, but I can definitely say I'm not interested in really watching those movies. Because I'm sorry, I don't think he's a good director. He's an okay writer. Like I said, I do love Blade. 
when he wrote the scripture for one two those are good scripts. Nay, for the reason sure I haven't had that seen that. But the Torah and I would man still. So sometimes he'll pull out a good script. His script here is you know, some are some of the first movie. And it's the crew created by James O'Boar, produced by Jeff Moves and Edward Pressman. Sadly passed passed away last year. Jeff Most. Oh, he produced the films and soundtracks for in the entire movies, including the first Crow, Salvation, and Wicked Prayer. He produced films such as The Specialist. This uh, was Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone and uh, Sharon Stone. Cinematography by Gina V. Arsh, which I wasn't a really big fan of the cinematography in this movie. I'm sorry. Edited by Michael Negro, Anthony Redman. Music is by Graham Root, who, like I said, has done a music score for other superhero movies. Yeah. Superhero, superhero. Let's see. I do believe the first one was actually the original Quarrel. But, yeah. He did the music for the first movie. Well, the only good crew, great Quarrel movie, in my opinion. He did the music over Tank Girl. My Emo from Power Rangers, the movie. And, of course, this movie. And Spawn. He did the music score for that. Another superhero movie. And in 2003, he did the music score for Daredevil. Starring Ben Affleck. And uh, he did music scores for, for he did the music, did some of the title singles for uh, Gotham. Yeah. Production companies Dimension Films. It was shipped by Miramax Films. It was released August thirtieth, nineteen ninety six. It's eighty four minutes long. In the box office, it made twenty five million. So I guess it yeah. But it didn't make this money. I can definitely say it's a flop. Yeah. It did get a double feature release with the Crow City of Angels. I'm sure it's on DVD by itself. A video game tie-in with the Crow City of Angels. I have to look that up. I don't know if it was a damn video game. I should look that up. Sorry. Oh, well, they made a PS1 game out of it. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I should have. The game follows the same plot of the movie as Action Sunday and brutally murdered by a gang, resurrected by a crow. Yeah, I never knew this game existed. The gameplay is similar to it's a beat em up game. The protagonist Ash, Ash's method of fighting enemies is hand to hand combat with basic punches and kicks. He also has the ability to pull off more aerobatic moves using fair button, buttons along the way. So I guess this was a malicious theaters movie. During the course of the game, Ash encounters various bosses, including the main villains from the film. Yeah, some of the graphics I'm looking at here probably does not hold up, but it's a PS1. Let's see. It was the one on the PlayStation, but I never knew I never knew they made a core video game. Never. <laughs> but I guess they wanted to do one for the sequel. But I guess to tie in with them, just to help market the movie. Or, you know, Power was released before the movie. Alright. But it said the game got released a year later, 1997, after this movie. So, anyway, what the plot is about is that is that after mechanic Ash and his son Danny witness a murder, they are captured and killed by a drug lord named Judah, played by Richard Brooks. Soon, a young artist named Sarah from the first movie, but Sarah's an adult now, meets Ash. Who's just returned from the dead? She helps him out, tells him you know what he has to do. Sarah, who is not a man, was written to the Federal War the Crow years ago. Uh, Eric Draven, Brandon Lee, explains to Ash that he's now the Crow, and Ash is out to get revenge by slaying Judah, his minions one by one until he gets to Judah, the man responsible for handing him to for first for, for the death. He's got to avenge you know his death. But Judah discovers the Crow's power and craves it for himself. Kind of reminds me of the first movie a little bit, you know. So anyway, we'll be talking about the Crow City of Angels here. Yeah. And again, this is a short movie. Well, this one says 90 minutes. But this is like an 84 minute movie. Really just for like a short film. You know, which is not... 
I'm not a bad thing. You know, he says one good thing I can say about it, though. Well, not, there's plenty of good things about it, but. Yeah, it's only one hour and 26 minutes. Pretty short movie. But all that time, don't expect a masterpiece. But the movie opens up with Sarah doing a, a dialogue. Like that one from the first movie. Uh, I really forget what she was saying. Don't really care. But it's kind of the same thing with the crow goes back when a person is dead, when they, when they, you know, to wrong the rights, to, to right the wrong that was wrong. And to avenge death himself, and that, you know, you know, love is stronger than death. Yeah. That's what to me the crow is about. Love is forever. And here they just do it differently. And the setting is in Los Angeles for the drug kingpin named Judah Earl um, control all of it. And you have, you see the beginning though that the crow is flying. And cinematography is ugly. The film is shot in dark, but everything feels like it's in clouds with the whole movie. So, I admit, I think the cinematography is pretty ugly in this movie. That's just my opinion. But you see Ash and his son who his eight-year-old son, Danny, they witness a gang of cutest thugs running a fellow drug dealer because you do have flashbacks, and I'm not even a fan of the flashbacks. But, you know, it's a kind of a ballsy move for them to do this, to kill an eight-year-old boy. You don't see him die, but you hear him get shot. What happens is they, you know, him and his son, you see flashbacks of them playing. You know, you see, sorry, Sarah just talking about what happened, and a crow going at her like, some of she has dreams about this murder. I guess she has a psychic link to the crow, and it's, the crow's like, in a way, telling her, the bird is telling her about this death, you know. And when she finds out about it, you know, she see her, where she's a tattoo artist now, she's all grown up, she's an adult, so you hear her hanging out with this little girl. You know, Sarah grew up to be a nice person. You know, tattoo artist, and when she, you know, is the death of the crow calling to her. But Judy's men end up capturing Ash and Danny because Danny hears a shot gunshots. He thinks there's somebody playing, so he goes to run out and see it. And his father, of course, Ash knows what that is, and he doesn't want his son to see it. And they walk and they see them, and they see them pow pow shoot a guy. Then they grab him and tie him up. And they're like, he's just there, boy, don't kill him, just take my life, just let this go, but we won't say nothing. And of course, Judah's like, kill him, no witnesses. And what about the what about the little boy? He's like, not my problem, kill him. You know, Judah just does not give a damn. You know, Kyla, the woman, the, the woman from Power Rangers, she's like, hush little baby, don't be crying. I was gonna send you to eternal life and shoot him. But no, when the, they shoot Ash to Kurt says nothing personal, man, or something like that. They shoot him, throw him in the water, tied down to the river. Sarah the music. Sarah follows the crow to the harbor. You see, you know, Ash and Danny in the water, and he comes out the water just to see him jump out, which is a pretty cool scene. And you see, that's how Sarah takes him back to his apartment. Ash wakes up, and she's like, "Your dad's like, well, I'm dead. No, no, it just doesn't. No, you know, doesn't want to believe it. So he runs all the way back to his mechanic shop." Has flashbacks of his son, and he's even though I'm not a fan of Vincent Price's lead, I do mean he does good here when he's you know in his pain, he's crying, kicking and and basically damaging everything. He has a garage, you know, and she tells him, you know, you have to avenge your son's death. Your death 
to you know, you know and then she you know puts the makeup on him and the music looks pretty decent again Brandon Lee is the crow to me he has the best makeup will always have the best makeup Brandon Lee is the crow he will always be the best actor to ever play this character I mean you know that's just my opinion but you know he goes put the jacket on okay, cool and get, he rides a motorcycle throughout the movie which I thought was cool And the correlation is that, you know, again, the person is brought back to life to to right the wrongs, you know, to make it right. And that Ash has the powers now, he has he's invulnerable to invulnerable, he's invincible pretty much, he has no bullets can't harm him. The crow can let him know when psychically when he touches somebody, you know, he can see your pain. Or even when he touches something like when he touches this painting, he's like he can feel that pain. You know, that gives him the supernatural ability because the crow is supernatural. And I guess you can say the crow has done this many times, but over centuries, who knows how many men or people that have been murdered and the crow has done it to fall back to life. Then, after he's done getting his revenge, he'll go back to the afterlife with his son. She gives him the pain and he goes up with the motorcycle. You have Kodo going to hang out. These people are weird. This, this movie gets to be really weird because Judah and his, and his you know, folk, Jovies, they're really into sex bondage, which is really, okay, I don't like that. That's just terrible. They're part of it. And you know, have, you know, Kodo going to Spider Monkey and saying, How's my suit look? Oh. Mm -hmm. Crazy. <laughs> but you have a scene with Judah where one of his men, you know, Trey Holmes says, you know, it's, it's, a, it's too much of a bad batch or whatever, this drug. And Judah feels like the guy betrayed him. So Judah, you know, forces him by sticking up the, the drugs up his nose real hard and killing him. He's like, you're right. It is a bad batch. You know. He's got this woman who gives him psychic link. She tells him that someone's going to come and get you. Or she's psychic or whatever. Blind and psychic and telling him someone's going to come and get revenge on you for one of your crimes. Judah doesn't seem to worry about it. When Ash starts killing him, he, he kills. First, he starts to spy the monkey in his warehouse. And Terry is like, Man, we killed you. You're dead. You're gone. He's like, oh, I'm back. You know, he messes with him. He's like, Dear God. Yeah. And he's like, He's like, Bye bye, Spider Monkey. And he puts him on fire, and Spider Monkey's pulling him. Curve comes by, Curve sees the explosion, comes over, sees the sign of a crow, and he's got the tattoo of a crow. And he goes to Judah about it, Judah's like, I don't care, I don't give a damn about Spider Monkey, what about my shipment? He's like, well, it all blew up. You know, I was like, it's got something to do with the crow. It's like, you have a crow in your chest. Hmm. Obvious. And then another like of his, Nemo, uh, Thomas Jane. He goes to these peeping Tom booths where, you know, he's got this token and you can look at the girl and talk to the girl. He's masturbating, literally. I'm not kidding. He is jerking his chain. I'm like, okay, that's disgusting. <laughs> I don't really see him do that. Thomas Jane do that. That's weird. But then all of a sudden the token goes out. You know, his time goes up, he's like, <laughs> you know, puts the token back in, so like this. And then he sees, it's like, you know, it's uh, Ash, the crow, and Sam, Sam, do you like me, baby? <laughs> and then he jumps to the window and beats Nemo up. You know, some guy should have stayed with a shotgun, but he can't shoot him, because remember, he's in one of the bullets. But Ash kills him, puts like a little paper crow in his mouth. He gouges his eyes out, which is pretty bloody. It's a doll stuff, stuffed in his pants and a paper crow in his mouth.
you to figure it out that the link goes between several. So just like the first movie, the old moments over at Ash afterwards, you know, there was a talk to Sarah and tells her that Danny, you know, his mother was a drug addict. That she tells her she, she basically mentions, you know, Brandon Lee, uh, you know, Eric and Shelley of them died that many years ago when they died when she was a little girl. And it tells him about his pain. He gets to, he even goes to the, the bottom of the lake to get his son's body to bury him and to see him in his pain. I just remember him driving around on the bike, motorcycle, which I, again, I like the motorcycle stuff. It's cool. And when the bird is flying, when the crow is flying, it's CGI. Judah realizes, though, psychically that through his psychic lady, Sabil, that Ash is linked to the crows to Sarah, and that Sarah has something to do with it. Well, at first they do go with Sarah, at first question her about it. Curve does, and she points a gun at Curve, he's like, ah, give me a baby, and she puts on the ground and destroys their business. But the man that is her boss, they go to her boss, torture Kyla and Curve, they go torture the boss, and he's like, he's like, Tell me where she's like, you're like, go to hell, bitch. And she like takes a point, you know, where you get the, the tattoo or whatever, whatever you used to, where she sticks it in his eye. But they, they're able to go capture Sarah. And it goes to the crow's over to tell it psychically. So Sarah gets kidnapped again. And of course, you know, Judah Phil realizes what the crow's power is and he wants it for himself. Again, I've seen that in the movie. <laughs> like in the first film. And, you know, when you get the, you know, a bit of sadness or walking around with the music board, it does remind me of the first movie. You know, Kyla, you know, he battled, Ash battles her. He would kick her around. I do like it though when he's sitting on the, when he just sits down like this. On the table, I mean on the, on the couch. You know, pop, 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 pop. you know, she's able to hit him. He gives her back. And he cuts her leg, or breaks her leg or something like that. And he sings to Kyla, Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Ash is gonna, you know, take care of you. Your big daddy's gonna give you a big whooping. And then he throws out the winner to her death. And when she does, though, you see like the blood of a crow. The blood that came for him is the blood of a crow. Then Ash pursues, you know, one more, the one more right hand man that is Curve. You know, Curve is going out partying and Curve is just you know, going crazy. Again, these Judas people, they're, this crowd, they're in a bondage. So that, that was just really weird. And it's got slow motion scenes or shots or whatever, which I didn't care for. And him doing the drug with the Curve, you know, and him shooting the shot. He shoots the, tries to shoot a gun at him. Well, I mean, the crow, I mean, Ash used a shotgun at him, but crow gets away, and the lady at the bar starts shooting him. If you, you know, remember the first movie with the Aunt Lee when, you know, which is better done in the first movie, but they shoot Ash, oh, Ash, you know, as the bullets are bouncing off him, he's, you know, but again, it was better done in the first movie. Because they were really serious about copying the first movie, they pretty much do it here. But he chases and then the motorcycle, because Curve also drives a motorcycle, you know, he gets stuck in the area, and Curve is like, sees the crew there, standing there with a shotgun, he's like, I'm not afraid of you, motherfucker, I'm not afraid of you! You know, he tries to ramp him down with his motorcycle, Ash has the shotgun, the gun, and pow, shoots the, I guess, the the engine up off the bike, and it blows up, and Ash is just torn up, his body just torn up. He drives him to the nearby river. Curve floats to his death. He dies amongst flowers in the shape of a crow. So down to there. And he drowns. And then he goes to save Sarah. But the crow tries to see where she's at, but the crow ends up, the bird ends up in Judah's trap. And he tries to climb to the building. It's like a, a devil knife. 
going on, whatever people are partying in. There was also a scene I forgot to mention where Ash goes to a church to talk to a priest. You know, I forget what about. I, I really don't remember this scene. And the ending scene here was just boring. I thought the end of fight scene. But Judo, you know, stabs the bird, and he can feel that pain because it's the link between him and the real world of life and death. And when that's injured, he's pretty much a rumble, just like any other man. But they find it out because, you know, Nemo videotapes, you know, them killing people or torturing people. And they they keep cameras of that because that, they enjoy murder. That's why they do it. But anyway, after the gang does that, you know, Judah is able to get the power. He's even got a crow face on terrorists. You know, Judah goes up and he fights him. Nearly gets ready to kill, kill him. And he's all strong now. It's the day of the dead festival. Yeah. He kills the crow though, drinking in his blood. Because of what you did though to the crow, Ash is now completely in strength. Judah does beat up Ash, he ties him up on a rope around his neck. Tries to hang him, Judah then grabs a whip and begins whipping Ash. Judah gets stabbed in the void. But Judah pulls out a knife to finally, you know, kill him, but he stabs Sarah instead. Ash gets mad and he and pills you with a metal pipe. And you'll just, you know, Ash calls a large number of crows. This kind of reminded me of Batman Begins a little bit. I guarantee you that, you know, the scene in Batman Begins, where all the bats are coming in when, when Batman and Gordon are trying to save Rachel, and the cops are on the way, and then Batman flies, flies down the way, you know. And the scene with the bats, if you don't talk about Batman, I bet you this scene was... Someone and or you know and Bruce is you know in the back cave and the bats are flying and, the, and Batman begins. I bet you he got he kind of David S. Corey got an idea for that from this movie. All these crows come flying through him. It's crappy CGI and uh, Judy dies and shitty CGI. Just he just evaporates. Okay, I guess the spirits of the crow kill him. They basically eat him, which I can't really tell because it's shitty, it's crappy CGI, shitty CGI. I mean. Ash carries her body to that, so I guess she would say her dies, I guess. And he goes to rest in peace with the son and Sarah now that Judah and his minions are dead. But, it, you know. But yeah, no, yeah. And the movie ends with Ash, you know, putting her in the church, you know, I guess to give her a proper funeral. And he goes back to his son's grave and eventually he dies and returns to the afterlife. And, with his son Danny getting to be with him in the afterlife for eternity. And the movie ends there with him reuniting with Ash reuniting with his son Danny. And it ends there. So anyway, not much I can say about this movie that was the core of the City of Angels. Now again, this movie is Crow City of Angels. It's okay in my opinion. Okay, here's what I like about it. I do like the whole thing that of Sarah coming back. I believe it's just good. And she does do a narration at the end too, by the way, just like in the first movie, you know, where love overcomes death. I know. Vincent Price, I thought he was okay. He was, I didn't really care for much of him as a lead. His dialogue was somewhat silly. I know the crow was supposed to be crazy and a little bit tough, but Brenda Lee did that so much better. But he was just not that good of a lead in my opinion, in my personal opinion. But I thought the villains were good. I thought the villains, Al Dad just played the villains were good. I do get uh, works, works, which are works that thought to get you out of the villains were good. And the story was a little bit of story somewhat. Again, there's some similarities. Before I get to that, though, Tim Pope and, and David Escobar, it does seem like, you know, Tim Pope didn't really need to direct this movie. Like, they were so upset on making like this the first movie because the music is nearly the same. The music is for, like, with Sarah getting kidnapped. Again, you didn't need Sarah in this movie. The actress was good, but you didn't need Sarah in this movie. At least in this movie, Salvation, it's a different Kristen Dunst, it's a different movie, it's not Sarah, it's a different girl. Put a different female actress in the movie. 
You know, we don't need Sarah. We had Sarah in the first movie. We don't need a grown-up version of Sarah in here. You know, the musical is the same, and, you know, it's just a lot of similarities to the first movie with the music score, you know, with the ending, and I'm like, okay, the story's very familiar. I've seen this before. Again, it's just with the sun. That's different, but still, it's kind of the same thing, and you really didn't need the same thing. But the Crow's Salvation, that's why I appreciate that more. It did it, it did the movie so differently where a loved one's not murdered. Instead, the loved one gets murdered, the guy gets framed for it, and gets, you know, executed to death, and his death is done wrongly. But that was definitely a lot better. David S. his script is okay. I mean, Graham Williams' music, music is good, but it's pretty much the same as the first movie. And again, with Sarah getting kidnapped, with the villains figuring out, oh, the link to the crow is his power. So they want to steal the power for themselves. I've kind of seen that in the first movie. And at the end where he's nearly kicking it when Peter's overcoming him and beating his ass. Okay, I've seen that with Top Dollar beating up Brandon the Crow in the first movie. I've seen it with Eric, you know, I've seen it before. You know. Yeah. That in that ending scene the the climax I thought was boring. But that's just me. But the movie's eighty four minutes long is short, but it's just an okay movie. And you know, the scene where he's getting shot a couple times seen it before you know like in the first movie when Top Dog was getting you know all the gangs just try to shoot him down but one more that was a lot better done yeah and Vincent Price was just like well sure his dialogue I just his voice I thought was annoying I just didn't really care for him as a lead the makeup is good but I just didn't care for him as a lead you know but the villains the people who played the villains they were really good I thought they were, they all did a really good job in the film, you know, in my opinion. You know, the film is a, it's a timeless journey, like, it's a lot of similarities to the first movie, with the narration too, and I'm like, okay, I've seen this before, we just didn't need terror, we didn't even get shot again a couple times, I'm like, you didn't need that, you know, and why does he have to have a black jacket, I'm like, we don't really need that, I always said was a girl, when this movie, I don't remember him, he wears a jacket, but it's not like, black. it doesn't, you know, I do like Eric Malpius. I think this is his name. I can't say it right, but I thought I thought he was a lot better in the role. But overall, gosh, his makeup is laughable, and his performance it sucks. Who's the best? At least better than that. But to me, Brandon Lee will always be the crow. No matter what actor you put into, and I don't care about this crow reboot coming out with Bill, whatever his name is. It looks stupid. The makeup looks terrible. I'll probably give my thoughts on that trailer one day. But anyway. The video day, day down the road. But anyway, The Crusade of Angels, it's it's a time lecture. It's an okay movie. It's meh. It's honestly, it's a movie I would never want to buy on DVD again. Or, you know, the only one I'd buy on DVD is The Crow Salvation. You know, it's probably the only Crow Sequel that I actually would, the only care, thing I cared about. But Save Angels, no. I'd watch it on TV. If it came on TV, I wouldn't mind watching it. I would never watch, I do World Review the with the prayer one day, but I definitely never buy this movie on DVD. Hell no. But Salvation to me is the only worthy sequel because it's different. You know. Yeah, we could pray something different, but it doesn't have nothing to do with the crow. Because the problem with City of Angels is kinda of got too many similarities to the first movie. It is trying to be like the first movie. It is like Tim Pope didn't get to do his own movie. Maybe he wanted to do his own movie, but maybe the producer like, no, we won't make it the same. Because they're so focused on making it like the first movie, which you don't do with the sequel. They, yeah, basically Harvey Winston take the film away from Timbo. Just in, in, yeah, the Winstons they took it away because I think they also worked on they also worked on Scream Two, Copland, Good Will Hunting. Airbrush, which I'm gonna do like, but yeah. But the Winston brothers trying to make it like the first movie. I'm like, that's what you don't do with the sequel. That's my problem with this movie. When you make a sequel, you make it different. Yeah. You do not make it like the first movie. That makes no sense. When you make a sequel, do it differently. And that's why the Crusade of Asian, I think is better because I did it differently. But the Crusade of Angels is a time waster. I didn't care for Fifth Price Lee. I gave them my problems with it. it. The action scenes, action is decent. I mean, 
the editing is not that bad. It's pretty decent in the action. Nothing spectacular. The first movie I think has a lot, lot better action, in my personal opinion. Better story. Brand new movies music is good, but again, I've heard from the first movie. Get somebody else to do the music for. I don't need to hear the same cue. I want to hear some different. When I, you know, I want different music too. I want a different plot, a different story. You know, it does have that darkness tone. It is a rated long movie. Yes, this is rated long. It does have nudity in it. It's weird and bizarre. Um, it is bizarre. But it's not a kid's movie. This is about a little boy that gets shot and his father comes back from the dead to avenge his death. So this is not for kids. None of these movies really for kids don't, yeah. Well, uh, probably the prayer might be rated R, but still, it's a horrible movie for an adult to watch. Yeah, that, that is torture to watch. But the Crow's Elevation, again, not a kid movie. All three films are rated R, so definitely Crow State of Angels is not a movie for children. Don't let your kids watch this. Adults only. But again, I recommend only watching it on TV. And you might have a different opinion. You might. Some people like the sequel. If you like it, you think it's underrated. To each his own. But to me, it's a forgettable movie. I'm not saying Salvation is great or anything. I like it for what it is. But it's just better in my, in my uh, personal opinion. That's just what I think. That's just my opinion. You know. Don't get offended. You know. But anyway, The Crow of Angels. It's still okay. Sequel, decent time waster. I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Or a so so. Am I writing for the Crow City of Angels starring Vincent Price? I'm going to give this 3 out of 5 stars. Yeah. Because I can get a little bit somewhat enjoyment out of it. It's just a time waster, in my opinion. It's just meh. But, guys, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the Crow City of Angels, in your opinion? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Alright, now I'm going to get into the movies of 1997. Yeah. Super movies that came out in the year 1997. Starting with this one. I think this came out in March. And, oh boy, I don't want, I don't want to watch this movie again. Gosh. Lord help me. And that is Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Gosh, you know, this is enough. Gosh. Oh boy, here we go. You know, this. Another sequel of that. Pro City of Angels is definitely better, but this sequel sucks. So definitely stay tuned for the review. Probably Epic Rant on Turbo Power Rangers, a movie. Yeah, I, I, don't, I remember hating this film. Yeah, but this is the sequel to the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie from 1995. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Again, 3 out of 5 stars. I'm writing for The Crow City of Angels at 3 out of 5 stars. And so, so, it's an okay movie. It's a time waster at best. But that's just my opinion. That's Crow City of Angels. And stay tuned next for... Starting with the 19 cent movie, superhero movies that came out in the year 1997. Turbo Power Rangers, the movie. Power Rangers movie. Stay tuned for that next. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. See you later. Bye bye.